So that's the basics of the fill light. So fill light, um, you can add a little bit of color to if you would like to. So don't go too crazy with the color though, or else it's going to start coloring your object. So you just want to uh, stay like low on the color. Now in the back here, we have what's called a backlight. Some people call it a rim light, and some people call it um, a hair light. And uh, sometimes it's on the ground, like pointing up, but most of the time it's on a light stand above the subject and pointing down on it. What it's gonna do is pull the object off from the background. And after I get done telling you about these lights, I'm gonna show you what they look like turned on and turned off on the main uh, object. So here's my backlight. It's another uh, spotlight and the position, I'm gonna go into the um, a new position in the camera. I'm gonna go to the left and I'll show you the, the position and heights of these. So we have these uh, around like the height. This one should be up a little, probably a little higher. There we go. So they're pretty much ab above the uh, subject or around the top or level with the subject. So we got the backlight back here and that's above and pointing down onto the subject from behind. Now here's my settings here. I even uh, decrease this even more. The backlight does not need to be really bright. So it's just basically there to give like a an edge around the object. It kind of like gives like a glow around the object and it sets it off of the background. Sometimes um, a lot of people say you need to use like some diffusion on it. So um, you, that you would do that by either changing the uh, color of the light, so make it a little like grayer if you want, or just set the intensity down. So that's how I achieved my diffusion was just setting the intensity down. Um, so that's the, that's the light settings for the backlight. Now let's go into our uh, active camera so we can see how the lights affect the uh, subject. So you're gonna wanna set up your key light first. So I'm gonna turn off these other lights and I'm gonna turn off the key light. And we can see how they affect the object. So in, in 3D, when you don't have any lights in After Effects, it's just gonna look like this and it's not gonna look like much of anything, as I have discussed in previous tutorials. We're gonna turn on the key light now this is your main light. Now it's coming from over here on the left hand side and it's pointing down pretty much onto the object. So you can see that the right side of the object isn't totally lit up. We're gonna need, that's why we need the fill light. So let's uh, throw the fill light in there. Wait for this to load up. And now we've got the fill light filling in the different areas that we would like. So I've got the shadows filled in and you can see like the bevel and everything on there. I made a hard bevel on these so you could see what um, what it looks like. And I got a sneeze so I'm gonna pause this for a second. And that was a relieving nice sneeze. <laughs> so we've got everything filled in. Um, some of the edges aren't but I like having sometimes the uh, edges of the white to be a little dark it gives it a little more dimension. Now, if I wanted to, I could pull over um, towards the right side a little more, the uh, point of interest, and fill in a little more of the um, letters here so they're not so dark on the edge. Now, the last thing I want to uh, show you is the backlight and how that affects the scene. I'm going to turn this on, and pretty much the backlight will just pop, off, pop uh, everything off the back off the uh, background. Now I wish it wouldn't show up there but it's going to. So it's a, it's a little in the way but it um, pretty much is just gonna pop it off the back. Now our background here isn't in 3D so it's not gonna be the most. Um, you're not gonna see a whole lot of difference and you're not supposed to see a whole lot of difference. Now if one of the things about visual effects, let me turn the backlight back on, is that if nobody notices that you did something, then you did it right. And that's true because you don't want people to see things that pop out 
um, when you're trying to make things look realistic. If you did it and things pop out and they catch the eye, then obviously you didn't do it realistically. And I'm not talking about things that look cool. I'm talking about like real life lighting and colors and all that stuff. So when you're trying to make something look realistic, that's how it is. So there's your three point lighting system. I'll back out and uh, this is what it's going to look like. Now I could possibly move this over here a little more to catch the um, S, P, and A. And you can see how that'll work in a second. There you go. So there we go. Now that's uh, about what there is. That's a good uh, idea on how to use the um, three-point lighting system. And a lot of studios and a lot of people use the three-point lighting system as their basis for setting up a shot and making it look real. So thank you for watching this part of the tutorial. Um, maybe I'll throw in another lighting system. I, there's a four-point lighting system. There's other kind of lighting systems that you can use. You don't have to use spotlights. You could use the parallel lights if you want. Um, you could use a point light in the back if you would like as your backlight. Now they all do kind of like the same thing. Just remember that the uh, parallel lights have the hard shadows. So I mean that's why I like to use the uh, spotlights more for these. And when you're using a spotlight it emulates what's really used in studio lighting more closely than what, uh, than a parallel light. So that's uh, that's my tips for you. Thank you for watching it and give it a thumbs up if you liked, thumbs down if you hated, and subscribe if you want some more uh, After Effects videos and you want to stay in the loop. Everybody, see you later and keep on lighting. See ya.